All right, uh, there's some other gunsmith features. V view detailed statistics and descriptions, I assume, just for the weapons. That's actually that image, the firing range image it's got there. That's That looks pretty That looks pretty cool. We'll have to check that out. Preview future weapon equipment unlock requirements. Inspect weapons down to the tiniest details. Disassemble and customize your weapons. Weapons have up to 10 modification points. Explore customization options with randomize. Automatically optimize a weapon for your playstyle. Visit the firing range to test your customization. So it sounds like there's a lot more customization than, than the previous slides had suggested. I mean, you can actually customization options with, with randomize. I don't know if you'd ever want to do that, but okay. That's pretty cool, though. So uh, just looking at this one, uh, the slide cover and cover swap. And it, again, it looks uh, a lot similar to the other um, third-person shooters on... on um, on Xbox, like Gears and whatnot. So, um, stand in the open during combat, obviously, and you'll be treated to our innovative, innovative respawn system. Hopefully, the spawning system is is better on Ghost Recon than it is in COD. If you like winning, use cover to cover movement to bound from one position to the next. You'll be harder to hit while moving and safer while stationary. Our cover system is streamlined and extremely intuitive. You can enter and exit cover by just tapping the cover button. While in cover, you can swap to a nearby cover position by simply targeting the point, then holding the cover button to sprint to that location. Cover swapping is the fastest way to move across the battlefield. And uh, yeah, that's that'll. I think for you guys that uh, play a lot of gears and stuff, I think uh, this will be fairly intuitive for you guys and you guys will probably have an advantage over everybody else I think um, in this multiplayer but we'll see we will see this uh, this next one actually interests me to a great deal actually Intel and data hacking so they can run but they can't hide so in future soldier soldier Intel is your greatest weapon use drone sensors special vision modes or even the enemy's own systems to highlight enemies for your whole team to see uh, understanding the intel system is critical to your to your success. When you have intel on an enemy soldier, he's highlighted for the rest of your team. A team with intel is obviously far more effective than one without. Uh, there are actually a bunch of uh, equipment that can detect enemies, including sensors, cameras, and drones, etc. But one of the most powerful ways to get intel is to perform a data hack. And what you can do... You don't necessarily have to kill the enemies. If you if you see uh, somebody running off of the zone or whatever, you can actually stun him or or take him down in other ways, and then hack hack his <laughs> hack him hack his systems. And if you hack his systems, you can get the jump on every single player on the enemy team. Every single enemy player on the enemy team will be identified to every single player on your team. Doesn't say how long, doesn't say what kind of time frame or how long this lasts, but regardless, I mean just knowing where everybody is on the map on the other on the other team is is crazy. I mean if you have that ability and, and you're doing that effectively, like the team that does that the most effectively and can hack in and find the enemy locations, man, you guys are gonna kick some serious butt. So uh, it looks like, again, this is really, really, really going to be very, very team-based, uh, squad-based, like it said, right right from the start, just like it said. And uh, you're not going to be able to be a lone wolf. And I think, I think if a lot of people come over to this game from Call of Duty, who are like hardcore Call of Duty players, like I play Battlefield a lot and other tactical games, and uh, I have no problem with the squad-based system and, and working with the team, but uh, a lot of players just like to jump onto COD and think they can just run the show and, and take out all the enemies. And, and you're, <laughs> there's no way you're going to be able to do that in this game. Not from what I'm seeing, anyway. So this uh, coordination system looks uh, pretty interesting, although in game i'm not sure, i'm not sure how it's going to work in game especially when you know you've got 10 and, and 15 minute game modes um and you're actually trying to use this coordination system but who knows maybe it maybe it's uh, it's very easy to use but um it looks like that uh, you you have four options here and basically the coordination system is a quick and easy navigation tool that is used in a, as an advanced communication system for the tactical player so not only you have voice chat you have the ability to do these other things so um these four options are, uh, one is over-the-shoulder interaction by simply looking around the play space and using the coordination system. The player can place informational markers and support their teammates. Coordination dial, you can uh, navigate to fire team members, objectives, ammo resupplies, 
quick access to info about your team and objectives, uh, what teammates are low in health, who needs ammo, who's trying to take objectives, etc. Attack map, you can actually see an overhead satellite view of the map showing teammates objectives, landmarks, deployable items, um, and you can actually create navigation points for your teammates um, to, to objectives and, and locations, etc. That's that's actually pretty cool. But again, in a in a ten minute game to, to go into attack map and 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 try and identify and, and navigate and, and, and coordinate a, a a route, I don't know how well that that's gonna flow. Uh, coordination marker uh, adds an additional level of communication. Players can actually show teammates points of interest, rally points, and flanking positions um, in game. So, like I said, I don't know. That's that's going to be one of those ones you, you kind of have to get used to, and, and if you can do things with it quickly, then then that's fine. But if it takes too long, I can't, you know, it it's, seems to me it's going to just end up breaking the flow of the game. But there was some stuff, again, there was some stuff like this in, in MAG, where uh, if you're like the squad leader or the squad commander, that sort of thing, I can't remember what the actual names were for those positions, but you actually had other things that you could do. You can communicate with other squad leaders, etc., and you can uh, you had additional um, uh, attack items or attack, you know, like uh, UAVs and stuff like that that you could use. Um, so this, you know, not identical, but it does sound somewhat similar. But it, it looks like it's also available to everybody. So It'll, it'll be interesting anyway. All right, so this confidence system, it, it, it uh, actually sounds a lot similar to um, what, you, you know, when you're taking a flag on domination, for instance, uh, on Call of Duty. If you have, the more players you have in, in that general area or the area that you can actually capture, capture the flag, the faster you capture it. So same goes here. Uh, in order to take objectives, if it's just you, it's going to take longer. If you have other teammates nearby, then it's just going to be faster. And that's, I mean... There's like three bullet points trying to explain that, and that's what I got out of it anyway. All right, so if you remember, I was saying that uh, there are no restrictions on the multiplayer as far as rank and unlocks, etc. There are restrictions on the game types and the maps, the first being the maps. There are only two maps that are going to be available on the uh, beta, and I can't remember which one starts first. That'll be closer to the end of the uh, this, the, the video here. But uh, anyways, the first uh, is Mill. It's set in a small farming community in rural Russia. A river cuts the space in half, limiting the number of access points to the other bank. Light fog and long ranges make snipers a deadly threat. So these maps, uh, just looking at the, the photos of the maps, they actually look pretty detailed. We'll see how they uh, they look in-game. All right, the next is uh, Pipeline from COD4. I mean, uh, <laughs> oops, just kidding. Uh, set in... Pipeline was used already. You can't use that name for a map. Set in dusty urban Nigeria, Pipeline puts players in intense close quarters battles. This oil refinery turned shanty village provides hard corners and narrow passageways. They offer excellent locations to slip into the shadows or tuck away a piece of equipment. And uh, I actually wonder if there there is going to be like glitch spots and stuff like that that he can do. Remember in Pipeline and COD4? There's a spot under under uh, ground where you can actually get into the pipes and, and you can't be seen. Yeah, we'll see. But this is not Pipeline from COD4. Trust me. It's definitely not. All right, so I think there are only going to be a couple of uh, game modes available in the beta. The first is being Conflict, and I think I covered this in a previous video, but we'll just uh, go through it here. Uh, it's a 15-minute default time, uh, enabled, respawns, rounds for Match Victory 1. Objectives are randomly located around the map, completing objective scores for your team, and some offer an in-game reward. The team with the most points at the end of the round wins. It do it's not exactly clear if the objectives are identical. Like, if you, if you get the objective, your enemy, the enemy team doesn't. Um, so not sure exactly how that's going to work, but I guess we will find out tomorrow now, won't we? Or today, sorry. I'm recording it yesterday. I'm posting it today, the day of the beta that starts today. All right, the second game mode is Saboteur. Time limit, 10 minutes. And uh, Bomb is located in the central... And this this is like Sabotage, basically, uh, from COD. A bomb is located in the central location. Both teams race to secure the bomb, carry it to the enemy team's base, detonate it. First team detonate the bomb, and the enemy's base wins. So, yeah. I don't know. Conflict uh, seems to be more of a game type that I play. I mean, I'll play Saboteur and, and probably post some videos, but I'll probably... Uh, stick to uh, to conflict for the most part, and uh, I am interested to see what uh, what other game types they're going to have in the actual release. 
So this this one's just a matchmaking quick start guide. I mean, I don't know why they even have this in here because it'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, press start after, yeah, whatever. This is the first time playing. Your user will be prompted to register for you play. I don't like all this crap that you have to do. So I'm, I'm joining a multiplayer game, and then if if I can't play multiplayer unless I register for this ridiculous you play, what if I don't want you play? I don't want you play. I want me play. I want me to play, not you to play. I don't want to have to join another offline web-based thing that has... I mean, I know it's tied into the game, but why? I don't want to. I just want to play the stupid game. I don't like it. Anyways, that's it for that slide. I don't really care. Um, yeah. I don't like it. So uh, on this next one, are we going to call this uh, Ghost Recon Future Soldier Elite or what? <laughs> this is the Ghost Recon Network beta for all players, for all beta players. Available in your browser on mobiles and tablets. Uh, Android only during the beta. iOS version available near launch. Are you kidding me? Android only? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so log into the free service with, with your Uplay account and a link console. Customize your weapons on the fly and sync them to your console, which is pretty cool. View weapons created by others in the Gunsmith Gallery and access your multiplayer stats and global heat maps, heat maps on the go. And I'm sure they're going to add to it, and I'm sure maybe they'll have like a, a premium service later on. Who knows? Actually, Battlefield hasn't come out with that yet either, but I think they want to. Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. They don't knock until you try it, right? Right. All right, so this last one here, this is it. This is just the beta schedule. So uh, April 17th, the beta is available for download. I already downloaded it. Today I'm recording this on the 18th. The beta starts on the 19th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Conflict game type available only across those two maps. Uh, so that's going to run for a week, and then they're going to introduce the Saboteur game mode. Um, so we're going to be playing a lot of Conflict, apparently. And then uh, on May 2nd, the beta ends. And then on May 22nd is, uh, I thought it was the 25th. Where did I read the 25th? Isn't it? I don't know. I read somewhere it was the 25th. Hold on. May. Okay, yeah. Oh, maybe I was reading that in the UK, because UK always gets the stuff like three days later. Anyways, so May 22nd, Ghost Recon Future Soldier releases. So, you know, I'm going to keep it open. I'm going to play it, obviously. I'm going to play the beta starting tomorrow and uh, see what it's like. Who knows? It may be good. It may not be. And uh, if you guys don't like it and I don't like it and, and whatever, um, then I'm not going to continue playing it. But uh, if it's surprisingly good and, and there are a lot of people playing it and a lot of friends playing it and stuff and you guys are interested in it, then uh, we'll keep it going. So it's all up to you guys. It's all up to you guys. Anyways, I know that was long. I apologize, but I wanted to cover everything and make sure you guys had all the information out in front of you. And like I said, you can go and read all this stuff uh, via the links. But uh, like, I said, isn't it nicer to hear my soothing voice talking about it and offering my input and detail about some of the things that I like to think about and create conversation with you guys? Yes, I think so. I'm Spider. Have a good day. I'm out. Hey guys, if you're still around, why not come over to youtube.com slash web of spider bite and help support me during my P90X 90 day challenge. This is a challenge I haven't worked out in like uh, <laughs> something like eight months. This is a challenge just to get in shape over the next 90 days. I'm going to be chronicling it with uh, vlogs and workout sessions over the next 90 days. So check it out. Come and help support me. And maybe I'll give you some motivation to get off your ass and do some exercise. Anyways, uh, click on the link in the description or uh, annotation, depending on where you're watching this. And um, and uh, check me, check it out. Check me out. Check me out. Yeah, spread it out.